folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. All six of our mamas have delivered a total of 12 healthy kids for this kidding season, but that's not where the tricky stuff ends. Lots of people think if the kids arrive safely, then you're good to go. But there are so many things that can affect your mama's health after delivery and while she's in milk. And your kids are susceptible to lots of things that your adult goats aren't. what you did there. That was smart. You gotta put a little in there and then you run and you fill the other one and then you finish this one. Right? Yeah. I was trying to figure out what was happening. Look everybody's so happy. This monster is Rhiannon's buckling that was born at five pounds and kicked off our kidding season. And he is nearly the size of a full grown doe already. Huge. He's massive. I bet, I bet he's 25 pounds. Wow. It's crazy. He's happy and he's healthy. He is happy and healthy. Hey you. This is one of Scarlett's bucklings. Scarlett's bucklings and um, Rhiannon, ow! Ooh, right Whoa. in the jaw! <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of goat. <laughs> He's bad. They want to eat, I'm Courtney. keeping him from the grain. Yeah, we can do that later. <laughs> we'll do another video where you introduce all the babies. But how all many right. did we have? We had five in November and seven in January. Four bucklings and a doling in November. All of those bucklings in November will go as weathers. And uh, then we had, let's see here, we had three dolings and four bucklings in January. Okay, so total, for those of us that don't like to do mental math. 12, that's 12 total. Thank you, that's the answer to the question, 12. 12, mostly twins, one set of triplets and one single. And how many are staying? One, just one. Say it again. One, Kenny, just I want, one. I want verbal proof. One. You all heard it on video, one. Yeah, okay. Honey Rider's doling is staying. Are any of the uh, the former does that we have, are they leaving? I will be selling a doe. Ah, all right, good. Because we made that deal, remember? One in, one out. One in, one out, yes, yes, yeah. I get it. All right. Look at that one sitting in the feeder trying to get some more feed. Right? That's the way to do it. Stand on it. Stand on it, and no one can eat what's under your No feet. one else can have it. And then you have the turkey. It has no clue it's not a goat. What the heck are you doing? Silly cats. Hi. Hi. Yes, I love you. You know I do. You're my baby. Yep, I love you. Even if you were too chubby to get pregnant this year. After these two adorable nuggets arrived, I felt a huge sense of relief. All the mamas and all the kids were healthy. We lost no one, and even our most difficult delivery quickly turned around and everything was great. And then the other panic creeps in. 
all the things that could go wrong with mom and kids after birth. Something that's happened to me in the past and started to happen this year was the old lopsided udder. Kids can favor one side of the udder or, or another, particularly if there's a single, but sometimes it happens with twins. And Dandelion Honey's twins definitely had a thing for just one side of her udder. So much so that I had to milk out the other side a couple times in one day and uh, you know really work to make sure that she didn't get mastitis. I used a peppermint udder cream, warm compresses, massage, and even holding the kids up to the side that they weren't nursing from while Dandelion was on the milk stand to make sure that they got accustomed to using that side and that we didn't A, lose milk production or B, end up with an infection in her udder. Another thing that's really important after the kids are born is making sure they stay warm and really making sure they have a consistent temperature is part of that too. That's been super tough for us because the, the weather has been like all over the place. Warm, cold, super cold, windy, rainy. It's, it's just been nuts. Goats in general are prone to pneumonia with those crazy weather changes, but especially little tiny kids. I like to have kids in the winter because typically the ground is frozen and we have way fewer parasite issues. However, right now the ground is going back and forth between a muddy mess and frozen which is not ideal. I mean, it's better than having kids in the middle of the summer, but coccidia can definitely still become an issue. It's something that we have to watch really closely and think about where we're putting the kids when they're small. It takes a lot of work keeping all of the stalls clean right now as well. For the first two weeks, I want moms to be in a small space with their kids. So the kids are nursing a lot, they're producing a lot of milk, uh, they're eating and recovering and not hurting themselves and all that good stuff. But as you can imagine, that is a lot of poop and a lot of pee and other stuff, you know, after birth stuff in a confined area. It's a lot of cleaning and we go through a lot of bedding. Another challenge that moms face after delivery is keeping weight on. Not a challenge I faced after delivery, but they don't have access to the same kind of snacks that we do as humans. Producing milk is takes the most calories of anything a goat can do. It takes way more than being pregnant, so it's important that they're getting lots of protein and more fat than they normally would. So the goats don't have access to pumpkin rolls? They don't have access to pumpkin rolls. Huh. Huh. Even with supplemental grain, the goats are going through so much hay right now. What are these little nifty bags you're pulling hay out of, mama? <laughs> this is my attempt to keep dust from being all over the barn and from the cats making a big old mess in here. Ah, who got those for you for Christmas, Santa? S Santa, Santa brought these. Some ways that we're addressing these issues include the installation of this handy nandy new dust filter. Not only am I excited about this dust filter for keeping things cleaner in here, but it also means that when I close up the barn at night to keep it warmer in here, this is preventing everything that would kind of get filtered out while the doors open from being in the air and making the goats more congested and breathing in more crap and you know preventing pneumonia i thought it was for me i thought you were getting me another one but no it's yeah. definitely for the barn yeah. i mean it is for me because i can't breathe in no. the dust in here yeah. either I got you. Not only does keeping the really young kids in these stalls keep them warm and close to mom, but it also keeps them from picking up things like coccidia. We tested all of the moms. We did a fecal right before they kitted, so in theory they're not shedding any coccidia, and because the babies aren't on the ground outside nibbling at stuff, they're not picking it up. So that is a key way that we prevent coccidia when the ground's not frozen. To keep weight on the moms, I am top dressing their feed with Godzilla, which has a high fat content in it, so their bodies can burn that to make milk instead of going into their muscle and fat stores. In addition to the protein that the goats are getting from their grain, 
They're also getting some extra protein from this chaffe. Chaffe is fermented alfalfa and has a higher protein content because alfalfa has a higher protein content than other grass haze. Because it's fermented, well, you can see they love it. Because it's fermented, it also is really good for their rumens during a stressful time like kidding and early motherhood. Here, girl, I'll put it in your dish. Keeping a close eye on the doe's udders within the first 24 hours after kidding is really important. And then even for the first two weeks to make sure that there are no signs of mastitis. This is when the milk's coming in really fast. So there's a possibility that if something's not draining properly, they can get an infection. Not only is it very bad for the dough, but that infection can get into the milk and make the kids sick as well. I'm gonna milk the one side of dandelion's udder. The kids are doing a better job of nursing out of both sides, but this one's still a little fuller and I wanna relieve the pressure. Because she's only not even a week out from kidding, the milk won't taste great, so I'm gonna give it to the cats. That really evened out her udder. Hey, spaghetti. <laughs> he knows what that is. Spaghetti. Are you happy? Yeah. Most importantly is patience and asking for help. Teaching first fresheners to milk is really challenging. And uh, sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath and sit back and relax. If I need a break for a day, I leave the kids with the moms and get back at it the next day. This is our third year kidding. And I will tell you, I feel way different this year than I did in years past. I'm much more confident that I know what's going on with all of the animals. I can spot problems sooner. Dandelion's udder is a great example of that. You know, I didn't notice it fast enough with Stevie's udder last year, but this year I learned and we're good. Everyone's healthy and she's gonna have an udder that not only looks great, but is producing milk on both sides. I'm also enjoying the kids a whole lot more because I'm not stressed and just constantly trying to chase my tail and catch up with something that went wrong. I can actually sit and play with them and just hang out, have fun. If you're just starting out or you're thinking about breeding your goats soon, just know that it will take a little time and there's learning curve and that's okay. Be patient not only with your goats, but with yourself, you can do it. You can take a look back here and we'll show you some things that we've learned. We like to show you all of the things that we screw up and maybe you can learn from them before you do it yourself.